Welcome back to the Jack Swarbrick Show. Our next guest is a very familiar face around campus, both for his popular online TV show and for his exploits on the soccer field. Max Lakowiecki owns the championship ring as a member of the Notre Dame 2013 National Men's Soccer Champions, and this season is ranked as one of the top 100 players in the nation by Top Drawer Soccer. He earned his undergraduate degree from Notre Dame in May with a double major in business and film, television, and theater. Currently taking graduate courses, Max got ready for this show by scoring the winning goal for the number 12 Irish earlier this week at Michigan State, his first goal since 2013. Clearly, Jack and Joe have a lot to talk about with Max. Well, of course, the thing that I first want to bring up is kicking your butt on your the Max and Grant show <laughs> when you guys challenged me to a, uh, a contest to see who could not break into a smile yeah. first, right? That was yeah. actually really impressive. Dingle, was, dingle <laughs> being the winning dingle word. was the word that was good. <laughs> I didn't expect, I didn't think Jack had that as repertoire. <laughs> Well, not, that's what we got here. We got a, we got a lot of things coming at yeah. you on this on this radio. I could feel it. So stay on your toes today. I could feel something in the air. <laughs> we just we you know we've uh, we've had one guest on today, Jalen, who's who's interested in a career in uh, television theater. I I assume from all you have done here to establish yourself as a celebrity that that's in your future as well. <laughs> Hopefully that carries over. But, yeah, actually I'd like to go in entertainment. Hopefully uh, I got to spend a few weeks out in Los Angeles this summer uh, networking and meeting some people. I spent a couple of days on the set of the Jimmy Kimmel Show with a former Notre Dame softball player, Jen Sharon Richardson. So that was cool. So I kind of got my feet wet a little bit. Have you been? Have you done any uh, other film work while you've been here? I know because you, you were a marketing major undergrad right or yeah yeah, so yeah. I, I remember because we had some some mendoza classes together we did did you uh yeah they were good they were a good time did you have any um did you have any other experience while you were an undergrad doing some film and television stuff or besides no, I, the show so i actually added film theater and television as a as a second major going into my junior year so i didn't have a ton of time um and so i kind of steered away from all the production classes so i didn't get in front of the camera much but um that's my main obviously uh, experience was with the grand max show um <laughs> So, yeah, that would, that would be the main one, I'd say. Tell us a little bit about the Grant and Max show for, for maybe some listeners that, that aren't as familiar with, with the infamous Dingle line from, from <laughs> Mr. Shorvik here. Presumably old episodes are available, right? I mean, you've got to be I, able to go to these. I archive somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> YouTube's got them. They got yeah. them all over, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so I, it all started with uh, Mike Herity's idea to have a student-athlete blog, um, which we came about came about through a meeting with Student Athlete Advisory Council. And so they came up to me and Grant and asked us if one of us would like to do the blog. And we both thought that maybe it would be better if we did it together. And so... Obviously. Um, yeah, I kind of spiraled from there and we took on these kind of alternate personalities. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't know that this that that's not actually my true personality on the show. I think a lot or of people are really careful what they say around me sometimes because <laughs> they don't know if I'll understand it or if I'm slower than I actually am. Which so. is the funniest part of this entire show. <laughs> but it is your it is your normal wardrobe, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no. <laughs> I got that jacket. It's a nice plaid jacket uh, on sale at uh, Salvation Army over there. Right on off sale. Of, yeah. So pink tag day well uh, you know the uh i i love my 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 brief turn on your show but but i've never quite recovered from the fact that when interviewed and asked who your favorite guest was you said jay billis i think i just said it for the people come on, i mean he's come just, on man i know i know i even feel bad i feel bad about it now but <laughs> does jay billis do the jack swarbrick show well who's your favorite guest that you've ever had on the jack swarbrick show um, my favorite guest on the Jack Swarbrick show. You know, I, right now I'm feeling you. I think I think it's it's probably I think you're uh, just saying that. But <laughs> it might I appreciate change. It, it might yeah. change in about eight or nine minutes yeah, here. But I'm, for I'm now, leave. you are the tip of the the tip of the iceberg. It's you're, you're incredible here. So I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, we got to cover a little soccer, don't you think? Since yeah, they think are so. one of the top teams in the country, might be a good and, thing. Uh, coming coming off an impressive win uh, against Michigan State. Um, you guys play everybody. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we went down, played IU, played Maryland. You got this ACC schedule. Um, how do you manage that? I mean, how do you how do you sort of maintain a rhythm through the season when one game after another is just so hard? I think, in some ways, like you said, it is difficult. But I think it makes it easier in that you can't take any breaks at all. I think our, we probably have the toughest schedule in the country. So whether it's a top team in the Big Ten or, like you said, anybody in the ACC. 
you got to show up each week with the same mindset that, you know, everybody's looking to take Notre Dame down. And so um, I think that's the focus that we try to keep um, in that mindset. Well, that everybody trying to bring Notre Dame down, I feel like that's something that you have kind of been a part of building this this Notre Dame beast of a soccer machine right now. And and so, I, I mean, you guys won the, won the College Cup a few years ago. Um, really, how do you feel this team compares maybe to that team um, in terms of talent? I know you guys started, you know, really hot um, with a couple of big wins. And, uh, you know, I know you, you just had a big one again the other night. With Virginia coming up, how do you feel about this team relative to that? Uh, I think, like you said, it's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of what has become uh, the last three years building this program to, a, you know, an elite level, probably the number one team in the nation in the last couple of years. So, um, but I think we try to make a, a point every at the beginning of every season to know that this is a new team. It's a completely different team with different guys, different personnel. Um, we try to keep some of the same characteristics, which is hard work, you know, um, all those kind of things. But uh, this is a different team. We've got a great mix of young and older guys on the team this year. Um, I think three or four of the top of our offensive guys are all underclassmen. And so that oh, is wow. – you know, bodes well for the future, but I think a lot of the guys in the back line are very experienced, even though some of them are just playing for the first time this year. They've been waiting and kind of groomed in the back line. So um, we've we've got a good mix of older and younger guys, like I said, and I feel confident going into any game uh, that we play, especially Virginia on Friday. We had Coach Clark on last week, and since you asked, he may be my favorite guest. <laughs> he's so entertaining. But, yeah. but he was saying this was the fittest team he's ever had. Culturally, you know that that only happens because there's a team culture that says we're gonna we are gonna be this fit. Yes. Uh, where does that come from? How'd you guys develop that? So I have to give all the credit to our strength and conditioning coach Matt Halley, um, who came over here from Australia, I believe, the spring of my freshman year, um, and completely changed the culture around uh, our fitness program and the way we do things. Um, and he's kind of got it down to a you know a, a science really, um, and what we can do and what our bodies are tailored to do um i think soccer is different than a lot of other sports and whether you know it's fitness or strength and stuff like that so he's got us doing a lot of the right things and he works with us every day in the summer we're up at 6 a.m doing our runs in the morning uh before kids are taking summer school classes and um it's a true testament to the work that he's put in i think it's a confidence confidence booster for us going into each game knowing that we are the fittest team in the country so there's no reason that a team should outwork us um it's all mental at that point we use a lot of GPS uh, technology, especially you guys have been early adapters of it. What's a typical match like for you? How, how far are you running? So he, he tracks us, but I think at the beginning of the season, a lot of guys were uh, eclipsing uh, 9 to 10 miles a game, oh um, especially some of the midfielders. Um, depends on where you are in the field. But I think on – I mean, as the season goes on, you're probably averaging 6 or 7 miles a game. Um, but that's not all that he really tracks is that's, it's kind of pretty interesting. He sends us an email out after every, each game with the breakdown of all the stats. And it's like, uh, you know, how many times did you, how many times did you sprint? How many times are you just constantly moving the pressure that you're putting down? Um, all sorts of different types of stats that, um, you wouldn't think of besides distance really. So it's kind of cool to see how hard you're working when you're working in the game. So how are they measuring? How are they measuring this? So is there something in your shoes, or there's something on your body, or? So we actually uh, this year we used to wear these things called uh, bros, is what we call them. But <laughs> <laughs> for all extents and purposes, they are bras basically. And so in the summer, and then uh, last fall we would train with these underneath our shirts. Um, and they have like right in the back, in between your shoulder blades, is a little pocket to put a little GPS unit in there. So we're wearing those. Um, but this year we got them sewn into the back of like an under Under Armour shirt. And so that's become a little bit easier. And we wear those in every training session and every game. And so that's how he's tracking them. We're like little robots up there <laughs> running around. He just turns us on before we go out onto the field. So <laughs> It makes sense. Yeah. So your first, your first goal from since 2013, really, why did you keep the people waiting that long? I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just don't under, I mean, I think we should have scheduled this show a little bit earlier, you know, uh, so uh, it would have been, you know, I think that's the only reason I'm really creating even added additional yeah. buzz. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I really, I swear I tried last year. <laughs> I, I really did. And I just didn't see, I, think, I feel like you're telling out. us this because you, you really use what you really wanted the drama. I, just, yeah. I don't even know, but, uh, but a diving header goal. Yeah. Full extension is from, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm more accurate with my head and, uh, <laughs> I'll turn anything into a diving header. As I don't get up the field, or I haven't scored a ton of goals in my career here, but um, yeah, I'll, 
even if it's bouncing, I'll still try to like dive and hit it. So, so. what you're saying is that there was no no need at all for this diving to to occur. You just when I saw, when I did it initially, I didn't think so. But <laughs> when I see the video, it seems like it looked pretty good. Like I you you know, it was it. necessary. Yeah. So <laughs> um, the the, uh, the thing that always amazes me when I uh, when I'm at your games is, uh, and I think people sort of lose lose a sense of this uh, if they if they don't watch college soccer is how physical it is i mean it is a really physical brand of soccer yeah uh yeah i agree with you i think um that's something that we try to take into all of our games and it's um i think even the acc sometimes was sometimes pinned as like a, a conference that was less physical but um from through my experience playing in the last three years it's yeah like you said um a very physical game um but I'll just leave it at that. I I, I agree with you. I yeah, and you know we respond well to that. You guys have you guys have built a culture where sometimes teams come in here and their strategy is to simply be physical, yes. right? To sort of beat you up, and and you guys maintain your composure and respond appropriately. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to think so. And I think that's one of the best things about having a tough schedule and playing so many different teams is that you kind of uh, get experience against physical styles against very technical styles against a mixture of those things so by the time the tournament comes around hopefully we're ready to play whoever it is well you will be you guys have been every year your leadership as a captain fifth year player is is really critical to this team's success and we look forward to a great season thanks so much for being with us i look forward to the next time i'm being interviewed by you in hollywood uh, as well as a guest on your uh, on your late night show in so, my studio apartment yeah, yeah. just me and you <laughs> sitting on the couch thanks so much for yeah. being with us we'll be back thanks. in a minute yeah. thanks for coming thanks, on yeah. Yeah. thanks joe